question is whether or not that energy that Republicans have can hold over the next several weeks um, because Democrats are also energized uh, in their own way. But there's there's definitely this sense, and even uh, Senator Cornyn said, um, I believe on Friday, that there's a chance that Republicans could pick up seats right. in the Senate, which would right. be highly unusual. Um, and so there's there's a, a shift happening, and whether it shifts back between now and Election Day, you know, remains to be seen. I was just in Missouri for a few days, and it and it does feel as if that it is just two different races. The Democrats are running a campaign on health care, Lonnie. The Republicans, Josh Hawley, I could see it in his ads, are running a campaign about conservatives, judges, and, and the importance of what the Senate majority means. And Missouri is one of those states that has a red tint to it, and it seems you could see the Kavanaugh effect uh, in real time. No, absolutely. It's absolutely helped Josh Hawley in Missouri. Midterm elections are a lot about convincing voters, what is it you stand to lose? What is it you stand to lose? And, and for Republicans, the, the pitch is, if a Democratic Senate gets elected, you're going to lose these judges. For Democrats, is if, if a Republican Senate gets elected, you're going to lose Obamacare. And that's why the pitch has focused in on judges and health care so thoroughly. And, and I think the challenge is, in, in some of these states, you know, Arizona, Nevada, you're starting to see the race creep away from Democrats. And it's happened in a slow but steady fashion. In Nevada, Jackie Rosen, the Democrat, has not been in a head, ahead in a public poll since the end of September. Uh, in Arizona, you've got Kirsten Cinema, all this uh, opposition research coming out on her recently being out of touch with Arizona. And so these races are creeping away, but the meta narrative here mm. is really about what do you stand to lose? And I think Republicans have prosecuted that case effectively. And I think it's unclear that the Democrats have really energized their voters. Hispanic voters have not been well, you know, reached out to, and many Hispanics, especially in Texas, are really concerned about registering for anything, whether they're legal or not. They don't want to be part of the government. They're so afraid of ICE and, and of really, rather than being angry by what's happening on immigration, they're really afraid of the government right now, and registration and voting is being part of the government, telling people where you live. The other thing is millennials may not be as excited and energized as Democrats had hoped. Where is the gun debate? Where are these other issues that had been animating young people, you know, several months ago after Parkland? And it seems, it does feel that the Republicans are regaining on the Senate side. You know, Peter, when you look at this from 30,000 feet, which you were asked to do a lot mm. in your position at the Times, a result that had Republicans gaining in the Senate and Democrats winning the House is actually pretty much emblematic of the divide in this country. Yeah. Rural America is in one place, right. which is where the Senate battle is. Suburban America is in another, which is where the House battle That's is. That's right. And what we set up then is a two-year period of complete and total gridlock and fighting. And you think the Kavanaugh thing was ugly? Just imagine if you've got a split Congress, a president who wants to play off of them to, 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 to benefit his own possible right. re-election in 2020, Possibly a Democratic House that not launches an impeachment inquiry. It may not go all the way uh, further, but it's certainly going to have a lot of subpoenas and investigations and so forth. It could, you thought the Kavanaugh thing was ugly? We only saw the preseason. We're only we're about to head into the main season. Um, the president uh, is doing 60 Minutes, and and something leaked out about Jim Mattis and Lonnie. You, Jim Mattis was a colleague at, at the Hoover Institute and in Stanford. Of you, and it, the president. He, he has a tell of when somebody's about to lose their job. He says, I think they're kind of a Democrat. Mm -hmm. He one time re referred to Rod Rosenstein that way. Uh, when he was asked about the future of Jim Mattis, the Secretary of Defense, he said, I don't know anything, but, you know, I, you know he may, he's kind of a Democrat. That, well, boy, that's a tell. Is he a Democrat? Not, not, not that I've ever seen. I mean, I think this would be a, a, st a staggering a finding to anybody who's spent time around him. I mean, look, I, Jim Mattis has been a stabilizing force for national security policy during this administration. He's been somebody that's presented a very reasoned point of view. Uh, I think a lot of people would be very nervous if Jim Mattis were departing this administration. That having been said, it does seem like the writing's on the wall with respect to some of the, the tells that we're seeing yeah. out of the president. Well, yeah. and their relationship has been strained for some time. Right. I mean, you can say that Jim Mattis has, has been, you know, the level-headed um, cabinet member who's had you know, put forward very traditional positions, but the president hasn't really been listening to him for months in terms of whether it's on Iran or other issues. And so there's been tensions in the relationship to begin with. The Woodward book didn't help either, Mattis, no, I did think it? Really, I, think Jim, I don't think Jim Mattis, though, is going to go voluntarily. And so that sets up a situation where the President of the United States is going to fire Jim Mattis or push him out. That's a bigger lift but, than, say, Rex Tillerson. Mm -hmm. However, with, with Pompeo at state and with Bolton and his deputy, Mika Ricardel, now at the White House, there's been a poisoning of the atmosphere, certainly from Bolton and, and his deputy, against Jim Mattis. And that relationship, as Carol points out, has been very strained. I, you know, I, 
I think it, it, it's going to be hard to fire him, but I think there are big changes coming after the yeah. midterms, and they are telegraphing that he feels empowered. Shocking that we're going to have a midterm transition like nobody's ever seen. Exactly. Anyway, I, before we say goodbye, we'd like to know your thoughts on the 2018 election. So if you want to get something off your chest and do it anonymously, do it at our electionconfessions.com and check out what other voters are saying, too. You don't want to admit what you are believing? Admit it here. Anyway, that's all we have for today. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week because if it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Congratulations, Jordan and Jeff. NBC News than any other news organization in the world. Want to give your family the best in entertainment and know you're getting big value for your money? Switch to Xfinity and you can get both. Call 1-800-800-2079 to learn more about all of our streaming options. Or get started with Xfinity TV and Internet for $49.99 a month for 12 months with no term contract. Get more of the entertainment you want with customizable streaming TV. And stream live TV and the most free shows anytime, anywhere. Plus, get more out of your internet with Xfinity XFi, the best in-home Wi-Fi experience with the speed, coverage, and control you need throughout your home. Call 1-800-800-2079 to get started for $49.99 a month for 12 months. And you can also learn more about all of our streaming options and flexible channel packs. Plus, when you get X1, you can get access to all your streaming apps in one place, including Netflix and YouTube. See how much value your family can get out of entertainment that brings everyone together. Call 1-800-800-2079 today. First alert meteorologist Bob Maxson, weekday mornings on NBC Connecticut. Last on the bionic woman. Now, I know this is going to sound crazy, but last night somebody knocked me out. They brought me to this prison and exchanged me with a woman who looks exactly like me. Her name is Lisa Galloway. Ready, Lisa? They're waiting for us at the loading dock. Yes, get me out of here. Hurry, you got 15 minutes to change your clothes and get back on the plane. Somebody help get Summers into my clothes. Welcome to the penitentiary, Jamie. Did you study her biography? You're gonna have to fool her family this time. I know Jamie Summers inside and out. But I still don't understand how I'm going to fake her strength. With this, you will be her perfect double. What is it? The secret of Jamie Summers' strength, adrenalizine. You, as Jamie Summers, will get the formula for adrenalizine from Wells and Goldman at the OSI. Jamie. Hello. Jamie. What are you doing here? Good to see you, but you're early, aren't you? Your bionic tests aren't until next week. Oh, well, I've got a field trip planned for the kids, and so I thought I'd just come a little early. Ah. Oh. I can't believe this is happening to me. All right, I'm going to prove it to you. Look at this. Now, can Lisa Galloway do this? Ow! Tomorrow, you're going to get your own face back. You're going to look like yourself again. Lisa? With this, you will be her perfect double. Lisa? 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 Jimmy, that's wonderful. My specifications. I am Jamie Summers. I am Jamie Summers. Is he adrenaline? I'm sending the rest of it to the federal testing lab. You're the safest person I can think of to send it with. Then Jamie Summers will be buried with Lisa Galloway's face. She has to be captured. Use every man, every machine at your disposal. Lisa Galloway is a dangerous woman.
operation on her face should proceed as soon as she's captured. And now, part two of Deadly Ringer on the Bionic Woman.